Hi, I'm Anna, 27, female. Very recently, I became a mother for the first time to a beautiful bouncing baby boy. He is my absolute pride and joy, and I would do anything for him. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for his father, who is my husband. This is the story of how one of the most stressful days of my life became even more stressful because of my husband. My husband, Greg, is what some people call hard-headed. He's constantly shouting about something due to his serious nature. He doesn't really know how to let loose and have fun. Hey babe, I know you're seven months pregnant and all, but could you please pick up after yourself? You know how I feel about dirty dishes. Yes, Greg, we know about your undiagnosed OCD. What did you just say to me? Relax, it was a joke. Calm down. Look, I'll do the dishes, but not now. My back is killing me. Ever since you got pregnant, you've been getting lazier and lazier. Maybe that's because making organs and carrying your child is a very taxing job. I loved it when my beautiful mother-in-law, Florence, helped me out when Greg was being particularly antsy. I know it is somewhat unconventional to get along with your mother-in-law. The general ideology is that the in-laws are supposed to be your greatest enemies, but for me, that couldn't be further from the truth. Florence has helped me a lot. She knows her son can be a bit much at times, and perhaps her helping me whenever she thinks it's necessary is her way of second-hand apologizing, since Greg would never do it. Oh, whatever, just hurry up and give birth already so that I can have my wife back. This man was insufferable at times, I swear. You might be wondering why I don't just leave, which is a very good question that I, at the time that all of this went down, didn't know how to answer. Why don't you do the dishes, Greg? Greg looked at his mother as if she grew a second head at that moment. Because I'm busy. I have so much work to do, and ever since Anna had to take maternity leave, I've had to work twice as hard to make up for where she's lacking. Well, I'm sorry that your bundle of joy is taking up all my time. Yeah, well, it's not like I didn't want this. Except, apparently, he did indeed not want this. This man, Greg, who I've been married to for the past three years, decided to come to me on my hospital bed and break things off. Can you imagine? Let me explain what happened. I was approaching nine months into my pregnancy. My due date had been scheduled, and we were just waiting for the baby to make its arrival when, suddenly, at 2 a.m. Babe, wake up. Oh my god, what? I think my water just broke. Seriously? Oh, yes, seriously. So you want me to take myself to the hospital and give birth to your baby without you? You know that I have a big presentation coming up in the morning. You know how important it is to me. And yet, you still somehow found a way to sabotage that and make everything all about you. Can't you just hold it for like an extra day longer? By that point, I knew that this person had to be mentally ill or just pure evil because there was no way that he just said all those things to me. He must have seen my surprised expression, even though it was dark, because he went on to say, don't look like that, women give birth all the time. It's just like sneezing for you all, right? You'll be fine. If you want to go, you can go, but you could have at least waited for us to deal with this in the morning. At that moment, I knew that this man was toxic, and I could no longer be with him. I did my best, already feeling cramps and contractions, to hop out of bed into some comfy clothes and drive to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, I was already in tears. People assumed that it was because of the pain I was in, which is true, I was in a lot of pain. But I was also experiencing a lot of emotional turmoil as well. All while I made my way to the hospital, I was replaying that awful conversation in my head. My husband was snoring peacefully in our bed while I was subject to the uncomfortable state that is childbirth. 
I was horrified, not only at Greg but at myself, for putting up with his nonsense for so long. How I didn't see it before, I would never know, but thankfully, perhaps due to all of the bright lights in the hospital, I could see clearly that this man was not right for me. Even though I thought those things, it was hard to actually verbalize it to him and say that I'm done with him. Despite his acting this way, I loved him dearly, and he wasn't always like this. Despite the history of our relationship, I could see now that the Greg I fell in love with no longer existed, and now that I was bringing new life into this world, I had to make the right decision for me and my baby. All of these epiphanies came rushing in when I was having my contractions, and when the nurses would come in and ask if any friends or family members would be with me to soothe me, I would just cry even more, knowing that I had no one to rely on at that moment. I saw Florence burst into the room. Move out of my way, I'm her mother-in-law. I have every right to be here. I don't care if we're not biologically related. She's my family. Florence, ever being the stern individual, always knew how to get exactly what she wanted, including breaking hospital protocol, just so she could witness this moment. Normally, they only allow the direct family and partner to be in the delivery room, but she managed to break her way through. She looked angry. She approached me. Now, I should not some sense into you for not calling me, but I can see that you're very preoccupied, so I'll let it slide this time. But don't you ever do that again. You scared me. Why didn't you call me, Florence? It's 3 a.m. I don't want to disturb you. This stirred me, this third me. Have you lost your mind? There is no way that you could ever disturb me, especially during such a grand moment like this. This is my job. I'm here to protect and help you. God, I love this woman. How did you even guess here? How did you know? Comment motherly intuition, but don't worry about how I found out. Just worry about pushing that baby out and being healthy and safe, okay? I'll be here to help you in all the ways that I can. And with that, all of my nerves and stresses began to melt away. No longer was I thinking about stupid Greg and his selfishness. I was just focused on delivering this baby and ensuring that they'd be happy. Two hours later, at 5.30 a.m. on March 14th, my beautiful baby boy was born. I named him Sam, and he was gorgeous. By my side the entire time was Florence, who was cheering me on, and once Sam was born, she couldn't put him down. She instantly fell in love. Due to the pain and the turmoil I was constantly in and out of consciousness, but once I started to feel better, Florence and I began talking properly. Okay, seriously, how did you find out that I went into labor? Did Greg tell you? Yes, dear, he told me everything, including how he was unable to come to the hospital with you. He sent me here to be with you instead. And I swear I was going to stop by on the way to the hospital to knock some sense into him, but that would have taken too much time. I started to sob as the events over a couple of hours earlier washed over me, reminding me just how much of a lowlife my husband was. Oh, no. Please don't cry, sweetie. It's okay. I'm here. Please don't let little Samuel see you upset like this. Today's a beautiful day full of miracles. You just gave birth, my love. That is such a wonderful thing. I suppose she was right. Looking at Sam, I radiated nothing but joy, and I swear to God, whenever I look at him, he just took all of my pain away. At that moment, I let Florence roam around a bit. She was with me for the past three hours and might have needed a bathroom or snack break. So after much convincing, I assured her that I had everything handled and that she could also go and take care of herself. Not five minutes after she left, I was visited by the devil himself, standing at the doorway to my hospital room was none other than Greg. I was upset, but he too shared a look of anger and frustration as he was forced to be here. 
Hello. Can I see him? I just had to come over and see his son. And for a moment, it appeared as though my husband's icy heart had melted, at least ever so slightly because a flash of several emotions was played on his face. I could tell that he was joyous because of this event, but part of him looked sad as if saying that he regretted not being here. Just as quickly as these emotions came, however, they also left, and he was back to being his cold and strict self. Little Greg Jr. looks very happy and healthy. Good job, champ. Sam. What his name is Sam, not Greg Jr. What are you talking about? We discussed this already. If the baby was going to be a girl, we would have named her Delilah unless it was going to be a boy, then Greg Jr. Well, considering that I did most of this myself, I decided to change that decision. It made the most sense to me, anyways, since I came here and gave birth alone. Come on, Anna, are you gonna act like this? Do you know how many men would come to the hospital at 5 in the morning just to check up on their wives even though they have a big presentation to make in a couple of hours? How selfish could you be? Honest, I do everything for you, and now I'm getting fed up. He looked me in the eyes and began to say, I thought being married to you would be easy, and things were quite easy, but this was all before the stupid baby came around. It was since you got pregnant with him, you'd be more selfish and lazier. I don't know why you can't understand it. Being selfish or lazy whilst pregnant is completely normal. What is wrong with you? Do you not understand how physically and emotionally taxing it is to be pregnant? Not only that, but I was far from lazy or selfish, as you put it. I was still cooking and cleaning well into my third trimester. And what were you doing? Nothing. You were doing absolutely nothing while I had to labor away, catering to your needs because you don't know how to do anything. Yeah, okay, let's see. I've been the one working late nights just so that I can get a promotion and extra money to fund your luxurious lifestyle of staying at home all day. Honestly, you have it way easier than me, but for some reason, you can't see that, and I think it's time that we part ways. My heart dropped, the baby started crying from all of the yelling that we were doing, and at that moment, Florence came in. Now, what in the world is going on? I was gone for five minutes, Anna. Oh, hello, Greg. Hello, mother. I see you're laying with the enemy. Me, enemy? You shut your mouth. I should smack you upside the head for the way you've been speaking to Anna. Don't you know that she just gave birth? Yes, everyone's been telling me, yet for some reason, you cannot seem to grasp the concept of how taxing that process is. You see, Anna, you've even turned my mother against me. So that's it, do you want us to part ways? Florence gasped and turned to her son. At that moment, you could tell that she was fuming. She started yelling at him, and unfortunately, all of the commotion prompted several nurses to flood into the room to see what was going on. Because Greg was doing most of the yelling, he was the one who was escorted outside, but as he was leaving, he was yelling something along the lines of how he no longer needed me and that once he gets this promotion, he'll be just fine without me. Once the dust had settled, I could analyze the situation for what it truly was. I broke down. All of the years of catering to this man came crashing down on me, and I was truly exhausted. Thankfully, Sam wasn't here to witness everything, at some point during the commotion, he was taken by one of the nurses and put into the nursery while I was just wailing and sobbing. Florence came by my side to comfort me. She was very soothing, and her motherly touch managed to console some of the aches that were residing in my heart. After what felt like hours of me crying, she finally said, we can get back at him. What? We're going to get back at him for all of the trauma he put you through. I am so sorry that I let this get out of control. 
As a mother, I did my best to raise a kind and respectful man, but I would be lying if I said that I don't see a monster whenever I look at Greg. As a mother, I believe that I failed. He's too far gone into whatever this is to change now, even though I failed Greg. I'll be damned if I let you fail, Sam. We have to work together to fix this, Florence. I listen to me. You have a beautiful baby who doesn't deserve any of the nonsense that Greg tried to give you. He said that it's time to part ways, right? There, maybe that's exactly what you should do. I got scared. Part of the reason why I hadn't left Greg is that without him, I wouldn't be anything. I was working, thank God, but it was not enough to live on my own, let alone with a newborn baby. With that logic, there was a high chance that Sam would be taken away from me, and he would have to stay with his awful father. The mere thought of that happening made me sick. I know you're scared, sweetie, but please don't worry. You live with me for the time being, and we'll figure something out, okay? But right now, that boy needs to be taught a lesson. But... But what are we going to do? Don't worry. I'll handle everything. You just focus on healing and taking care of that sweet little boy. Grandma's got everything covered. She was right when she said that because the events that happened later were completely shocking. About a week after Sam was born was when the revenge was enacted. It turns out that Florence has a lot of lawyer friends as well as friends in the media. This wasn't mentioned before, but Greg works for one of those high-end companies on Wall Street, and as such, it should be noted that any detriment in the company will be broadcasted, at least locally, which is enough to tank a company's reputation. Florence, my savior, managed to get the audio on video recording of what went down in that hospital on 14th of March. To this day, I'm not sure how she convinced the security to let her have that footage, but once she got it, she talked to her friends who work in journalism and media. Within hours, on an early Monday morning, Greg was being bombarded with news outlets with headlines such as Hospital CCTV exposes high-powered executive verbally abusing wife after childbirth, shocking footage reveals husband's disgraceful behavior towards postpartum wife, from CEO to shame, hospital video leaks husband's shocking outburst towards new mother. I can't imagine the look of horror and shame that he must have had on his face. Ever since I was discharged from the hospital, I had been staying with Florence. I think Greg genuinely believed he was in the right, and he was waiting for me to beg him to come home so that we could reunite as a family. But after seeing that I wasn't going to come, he started making threats. I knew he was struggling without me. I mean, who would do the cooking and the cleaning if I wasn't there? And now, with this story that was defaming his character, it was only a matter of time before he got the call from his boss saying that he's been fired and that the company no longer has any affiliations with him. So much for that promotion, right? Like clockwork, he called me after a couple of hours of receiving various threats from trolls on the internet as well as being blacklisted from many companies that he was trying to talk to. He explained all of this to me on a phone call. Anna, please stop. I get it. I messed up. I'm so sorry for everything. Life here has been awful without you. I need you and the baby. I don't care if he doesn't have my name. You said his name was Stan, right? I love him, and I loved you. Please come back home. My life has been ruined, but we can fix it together. I have no interest in coming back. I have no interest in coming back to a man who is so selfish that he left his wife moments after she gave birth. I mean, who does that? I'm glad that your entire life is unraveling before your eyes. Ever heard of karma? Well, this is her, and it turns out that she's a right troll to anyone who deserves it. I hung up the phone, and Greg proceeded to bombard his mother, knowing that she had a part to play in all of this, but she wasn't taking anything from Greg, not his harsh approach and not the sad approach either. 
Florence, like myself, was completely done with Greg. We both believed that he got everything that was coming to him. Several months go by, and I was still living with Florence at that time. I had finalized my divorce from Greg. Every time he'd send our money and child support, he tried to plead with me for me to rescind my decision, but every time I would adamantly answer no. Greg was living a miserable life, and he even had to downgrade the house he was living in, as he could no longer afford it. He tried looking for work everywhere, but no one wants to be associated with a verbally abusive husband and father who cared more about his career than anything. I think he managed to get odd jobs here and there, managing a poor mechanic company and things of that nature, but for the most part, you were struggling. I was actually in the process of writing a book about my struggles with being married to a narcissist after the local news outlets exposed Greg for his true colors. I went on many interviews and podcasts, adding more detail about what happened. I'm so grateful for everyone willing to listen to my story as they were all so receptive and understanding. I was especially grateful to Florence, of course, as without her input, I would still probably be stuck with Greg. But now, I'm making a name for myself and my new agent informs me that the prospects of my book doing well are extremely high. I couldn't be happier moving into this next chapter of my life with lovely and supportive fans, supporters, a big stack of money on the way, and, of course, my beautiful family, Florence and Sam, who I might love very dearly. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.